I have seen this orchid sold online with a price range between $50 all the way up to $90. This is Guarachea Black Comet. Taking this price tag into consideration if you're into dark blooms, and these are gorgeous dark blooms, I figured it might be of interest to equip you with a care video about this orchid, how I got her from this stage two years ago to this stage at the point of filming being May of 2024, and include a massive thank you to Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulent who gifted me this orchid. So there's two things. One is, to encourage you either to get the orchid, not freak out about the price range, and another thing is to express my gratitude and report back to my favorite neighbor in Portugal that the orchid she gifted me is doing exceptionally well. And I sincerely hope that she did not pay that kind of money. And if she did well, let me just say something, Fernanda, this orchid is doing phenomenal. At the point of receiving, I got my guarachea in bloom, so I managed to appreciate what the blooms actually would look like without being tired because of shipping. As per with orchids like these, you get a pseudobulb that has been forced to bloom, hopefully a backup pseudobulb, which I got, and then I rummaged around in the media, getting it off the base of the orchid so that it could breathe because coca choir is extremely water absorbing. Not dissing coca choir, I'm a fan of coca choir when it comes to orchids, but I found a new growth. And then we fast forwarded a few months and the new growth had already developed, plus it was pushing out a second new growth. So if you're in the United States and you see the price tag of this orchid, I can already reassure you that she is extremely vigorous. Now you may be wondering why is she still in her old media, even though fast forward several months new growths were growing. Well, this genus was new to me, even though she has Encyclia and Prostechia in her, and I'm familiar with both of those, but that doesn't mean that the orchid in question would be exactly the same. And I'm the kind of person that likes to wait, watch, and observe. And I work with old media when it comes to pH ranges so that the orchid can get the nutrients that she needs. And I like to assume the media has broken down a bit, etc. Anyway, the first thing that I noticed, and that is probably because of the media breaking down, I had to sometimes treat the surface of the media with some hydrogen peroxide to avoid any fungi or mold developing. And then, of course, I noticed a black spot on one of the new growths. And that is just something that comes with having an orchid in old media and some of the spores go onto the new structures that are nice, juicy, and tender. But I kept treating the surface of the media with hydrogen peroxide and kept the little fungi and spores under control. As the temperature started to cool down a bit, that little black spot started to spread and I thought nothing of it. I just broke up the brack that was still green and juicy away from the pseudobulb so that I could allow for some airflow and let that whole area dry out before I could cut it away. But eventually it is time to repot and this is the exciting part because coca choir is so easy to remove from the roots and this orchid being super thirsty, the coca choir being super water retentive, they were a match made in heaven and I had a very well established root system. I potted my orchid it up straight away into Lekka and self-watering, which is 80% of my collection. That's the setup that I use. Thought nothing of it, didn't stake her because of all the root system that I left on, and she promptly blew out of her pot, unfortunately. But it gave us an opportunity to inspect how the new roots were doing, how the old roots were faring with Lekka, and none of them had deteriorated. The new roots were growing into the media anyway. I just potted her up and still didn't stake her, but I took her out of the breezy section of the patio. And you can see that she is not a shy root grower at all which is something that we want, especially once again, if you are going to buy an orchid with a very high price tag. And here's the result of two years of care of this orchid in Lekka and self watering. When it comes to providing for this orchid, make sure that you use a highly water retentive media. My Lekka self watering did the job. This orchid is super duper thirsty. She did not bloom on the two grows that I had when I repotted her, but they matured beautifully. And then she started to throw out four more new growths and all of them are in spike three of which are currently in bloom. I have a fourth spike coming that looks something like it's on steroids. And that spike is a clear result 
that I could start fertilizing much, much heavier as the temperature started to warm up because all these four new growths needed to be carried through the winter where I have low light levels and cooler temperatures to the preference of this orchid. But I do want to remind you, I have very challenging conditions. So do not be put off if you like this orchid, if you see the high price tag, if you're growing indoors, or let's say you have temperatures that do not drop below 20 degrees Celsius, this orchid is going to do so, so much better for you than she is performing for me. I have to tiptoe through the winters with 20 degrees Celsius minimum. You will not have to tiptoe and care for this orchid throughout our seasonal winters as much. One thing I do have to say though, is that she won't do very well in direct sun. Not like her other parents, the Encyclia or the Prostechia. You can see by the large glossy leaves, she would prefer to be in as bright shade as you can give her, but also, because she has to deal with lower light levels in my conditions, this is proof that she doesn't need as much light as you would think she does in order to perform well. Now, just imagine what this orchid would do for you, bloom-wise, being able to cultivate her under super bright light without burning the leaves. I would hedge any bet that there will be many, many more blooms, even though she is a sequential bloomer and I'm gonna get a lot of blooms, but there is so much more potential in this orchid than what you can see in mine. And that is also the reason for this video because I was taken quite by surprise to see her price tag and I thought, well, people might be put off thinking they can't grow her. So that's why I'm throwing in some care tips as well as once again, a massive thank you to Fernanda Nathimento Orchids and Succulents. My temperatures in the winter go down to 14 degrees Celsius. My setup is Lekka and self-watering. Lekka has evaporative cooling. For a warm to hot grower, evaporative cooling means that the pot registers even colder temperatures than the ambient air. And this orchid has not thrown a fit. My fertilizing regime throughout the winter, because that is when she's developing her growths, is very conservative because I don't want salt buildup, because I don't want the growths to bolt. Too much nitrogen, and I will have weaker growths. Too much calcium, and yes, I will have strong growth, but they will be a little bit stunted because I can't provide the right light levels. So I'm going with a conservative 200 parts per million for an orchid that has been growing four new growths from November throughout March. If you're in the ideal climate, I would throw 300 to 400 parts per million at this orchid of a well-balanced orchid fertilizer because she can take it. I'm happy to report that any kind of deficiencies that you see, they are dealt with. All the new growths are looking nice, shiny, and evenly spaced out. There are no crinkles, there is no concertina leaves, and the foliage is evenly green. But what a difference it makes. With a little bit more fertilizer, as from March, I started to up the fertilizer to 300 and then 400. Now we've got 500 parts per million in this orchid. As the temperatures rose, so did my parts per million. And that fourth spike, it looks like an abnormality. <laughs> I really wanted to wait until all four spikes were in bloom, but I was already losing some blooms at the base of the spikes that opened up much, much earlier. And I didn't want to wait any longer because now I've got three spikes in bloom. I believe this is a great representation of what this orchid is capable of and the beautiful show when it is in bloom on multiple spikes. The bloom duration is very generous as well. Despite having removed three blooms from the two first spikes that bloomed out, they lasted a good part of five weeks. But it took that long for the third spike to start opening its buds. But you see how long this orchid would also be in bloom, having spikes that provide sequential blooming. I've already enjoyed the first two spikes opening up back in April. I kept it out of the viewfinder if we were on the patio, <laughs> specifically for this video. We are now in May. I have so many more buds to go and another spike that hasn't even opened its buds yet. So this orchid is well worth the extra little money if you have the budget and you see it, at least you will get your money's worth with this one. The one thing this orchid lacks, however, is she is not fragrant. Encyclias are fragrant, Prostechias are fragrant. In my climate, now that the sun is out, it's been warm enough. I've been trying to maneuver myself around the blooms long enough to see if I pick up a fragrance. Her parents are fragrant. In my climate, she is not. So I want to put that out there just so that you're not disappointed because her parents being highly fragrant, I'm extremely surprised that this one is not. If I happen to have a dud as per when it comes to 
fragrance. Let me tell you that her parents always smell of very heavy molasses honeysuckle. It's a very deep, rich, sugary fragrance and it can fill a room quickly. You don't have to guess who's playing if your Guarechea Black Comet is in bloom and you happen to have a fragrant one. So I just want to put it out there. Mine's not fragrant. It doesn't mean that others cannot be. Sometimes it just works that way in the orchid hobby. And another thing, sometimes she's listed as a black orchid. She's not. The colors that you see on the screen are true. I just want to warn you that it is not a black orchid. It's pretty clear that that would be a misleading representation, even though she's called Black Comet. Some listings give her the little added tagline saying a black orchid and well, that is just misleading. So maybe that is why the price tag sometimes is the way it is. But I don't want you to think you're buying a black orchid and then this is what would bloom for you. Personally, I love this orchid. I love the richness of the color. It's unique on my patio. And thank you once again to Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents for this gift. There is nothing better for an orchid grower than to report back to the gifter. She is doing fabulously. Obrigado, Fernanda. If you have any questions that I didn't touch base upon, if you have any conditions you're concerned about that you might want to purchase this orchid, let me know in the comments. I can help you out with any specifics you may want to address and bring to my attention. In the meantime, would you please give this video a thumbs up? I would so appreciate your vote of confidence if you would subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you so much for doing that. The support goes a long way, as does the fact that you watch the video to the end. And two more things. Thank you for watching. Have yourself a beautiful day on the condition that you stay safe, please. Take care. Bye.